Ladies and gentlemen, I tell that today say that podcast with it will be good. Many people will drag it because of some of the things he said. Because once you talk against church for Nigeria, people will come for you. They don't want just say you talk against church. The main podcast never ever come out. That today, later today will come out. It's a bit already collect dragging. Mike Bamilo son. Evangelist Mike Bamilo son. Don't get throw one, one better bullet. Ah! Solomon Bucci. And air this disagreement. Let's show that center tongues are tongues are wagging. People know the blast. I'm saying they attack the church. But I'm not really serious. The man attack the church. He just talk the ghost petrol. Let me show you Mike um Joshua Mike by me Louis tweet first and they come back. So now visions are the reason Nigeria isn't productive. Boy, the mentality of blaming church attendance for Nigeria's problem is a very misguided one and at best an insult. Visions are commonly held on Fridays, right before the weekend. If we want to be productive, why not also ban recreational events? comedy shows, concerts, in fact, ban every social gathering. The hot weather seemed to have corroded some minds to the point that they failed to think clearly and address the real problems. In case you don't understand what Joshua said there, <laughs> because he used English put up, uh, he said the hot weather that they affect with our big brain. <laughs> he said I could stop church, we to stop comedy shows and everything. But in Nigeria today, there's church opposite church, beside church, corner of church. All of them, they do nine vigil together. I have seen nine vigil happen on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Not that one church will do a move, I've seen different instances. But I've not seen factories producing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. How many of us have really seen factories? Producing. But let's even leave that. Let's go to Solomon Bushia, they come back. Dear Peter Obi, I am starkly disgusted by your recent comments on that podcast about how the church is one of Nigerians' problems. It's sad to see the false narrative gain popularity because, quite frankly, there's no church that has vigils every day of the week. There's no church that has mandatory activities for members every day of the week. Your gross exaggeration of church weekly activities has misrepresented the church to religious antagonists who thrive in deriding devout Christians in Nigeria. In fact, I strongly assert that the only thing that works in Nigeria is the church. If the government manages Nigeria, how Bishop Oyedepo manages Covenant University, which is the best university in Nigeria and one of the best in Africa, Nigeria would be great. A lot of our general overseers have systems that have worked. Take Redemption Camp as an example. They have created thousands of jobs, empowered millions of Christians, and impacted lives at large. Nigeria will not survive if the church is expunged. The hope and spiritual edification the church provides is the only sanity holding most people to stay calm in the nightmarish condition of the nation. I don't fathom taking a swipe at the church when a good majority of your supporters wear slash are Christians. Quick correction. Benevolence and charity are fundamental practices in Christianity. However, giving to the poor and sickly isn't tight. Tight is tight. 10% given to the church, which is often used for administrative purposes. I know you to be a great leader, not theologian. The church has built lots of talents and deserves more recognition than this brash and tainted comments. The problem in Nigeria remains the government, quality of politics, and our corrupt leaders. Stop making the church a cheap target. Sign Solomon Bushi, your supporter. So real quick, let's focus on this Bushi's open later. He was quite res respectful about it. He just aired his opinion and dropped his pen. Now let's go to the start of the matter. Yeah. There's no church who does vigils Monday to Saturday. And I've also watched the video of Peter Abbey, the short clip that came out. There's no way in that video where he said church is the problem of the country. What he said is that we'll convert the nine vigils to nine shifts. In other words, the level and numbers of nine vigils we see in Nigeria if we can see that same level and number in production factories working both day and night, 
Nigeria will be a greater country. So it's saying, this attention we put to these nine videos, let's put it to production. Simple as A, B, C. So let nobody come and make it look as if he's saying the church is the problem of Nigeria. The man never said that. Apparently that was what we heard. This one, secondly, you said the only thing working in Nigeria today is the church. And if government manages our schools the way Bishop Oyedepo manages Covenant University, Nigeria would be a better place. I beg to disagree. If Nigerian government manages our school the way Bishop Oyedepo manages Covenant University, poor man picking will go school. Because practically what they do in that place is collect money from both the rich and the poor from church and build a university that only the rich can go to. Yeah, it's the best university in the country, but at what expense? The expense that is funded by only the rich. Only the rich man picking ID covenant. If poor man picking mistakenly go there, get scholarship from one person or something. And if Nigerian government runs it like that, people like me from not even near school. You know, so let's just understand what we're trying to say. We give too much attention to the church or Christians, but give too much attention to church the way we obey church instructions. If we obey productivity rules like that, Nigeria for the better. And forget that story you are putting and say the church is the only thing keeping the sanity of Nigeria. My brother, leave that just young ladies go to the church these days to go and find men that has money. If you say with a joke, sit down, church, drop your phone for a chair. You go know what that sanity really did it. Don't drop your phone for chair, make you dance in here. Your eye go clear. You know. So we, we, we're making it sound as if the man said we should stop the churches. As if he said the church is the problem of the country. But that's not what he said. He just clearly told you we are giving too much faith and we are giving zero work. And the Bible said faith without work. You know the answer. You know. And then let's talk about sites. I don't know why people believe that the money you give to the poor, the money you give for benevolence cannot pass out, but cannot pass off for your tithe. They believe that you must give the 10% to church so that it's used for administrative purposes. There's no way the Bible says bring 10% to church so that we use for administrative purposes. The Bible says bring it so that there'll be food in my storehouse. The idea of this tithe in the first place was of benevolence to help those who don't have. And at the time, those who don't have will go to church to get help. But these days, our pastors are more interested in driving Rolls Royce and buying private jets than helping the people that really need help. In fact, some pastors never they preach if you give to the poor, you will not get rich. You should give it to them who have money. What the Bible especially commands is give unto those who need it. Help the poor. So listen to me, gentlemen and ladies. If you give to the poor, it's as good as giving your tithe. In the early church, when the tithes were brought, they used it to buy food and they share it among themselves, especially, especially those who need food. So if you find someone who needs food, buy a food, make sure buy your tithes with that. 